What's happening, guys? It is uh, Friday, the 23rd of June. I'm in uh, on the road again uh, another event, uh, trying to keep, keep making sure that people know what the market looks like today for real estate investors. And of course, delivering the same information to you. That's why I'm in my business camos, right? Uh, you got you to you put on the collar and the buttons, right? When you're trying to trying to go out there and, uh, and, and get in those environments, everybody loves to do sport coats. Well, I'm a sport coat kind of guy. So this is this is mine. This is how I'm going into this stuff. And bottom line is nobody's going to forget the redneck banker was there bringing data with respect to the housing market. So also sitting in town, I'm looking out the window of my hotel room. And what am I looking at? I'm looking at the building with the name of a company I used to do business with. I used to be, hadn't paying my license that years ago. In fact, this company I didn't need to license at the time because the way licenses are set up, I just registered loan originator. And at the end of 2012, uh, it reminds me of what banks can do in this market, what people that don't understand the real estate investor can do in this market. Uh, I had 20 to 30 transactions. I don't remember the exact same uh, the exact number in various forms of whether they were uh, approved or ready to go to docs, docs out, signed, or in funding. All these transactions, they killed them all, all of them. And they used the statement, a couple of things. One called rapid acquisition, means which means somebody's buying too many houses at once. That's BS. Now, I can see where a person go out again, it's maybe freak out about that. This is a brand new investor. They had a way just a regular wage type environment and then was given you know a bunch of money from inheritance or something. Then they're going to spend a lot of it buying investments or invest a lot of it and not knowing what they're doing. That's a risky thing. I get where they're coming from. That that was not the case with my people. The other thing they hit me with was something called non-arms length transaction. Now, a non-arms length transaction is, let's say, and this is something that's done in the past. Let's say a, a builder or developer or partnership is building a condominium complex. Then what they'll do is they'll sell the first 10 to people that work for the builder or the, you know, the builder's family, somebody really, really close to set the price. There's no price out there. Really, you know, it's a brand new car uh, part, or condominium complex. You've got condos down the street selling for a certain amount, but they're older. Well, they're going to bump up that price and sell it internally to each other, right? Because they're getting the they're getting the benefit of where the sale is and they're setting their market. That's a non-arms lane transaction. Well, what they described a non-arms rate transaction was, was my buyers buying from somebody who just bought a house gutted it, rehabbed it, they're selling it. Now this person who sold it also has a management company that's going to manage and maintain it in that area. And the buyer lives out of the area. It's It was a turnkey is what they were doing. Well, they said, well, that, that's a non-arms length transaction. They're continuing to do business together. It's a bullshit excuse. That did, that was not real. That was something that they dreamt up as a reason to get away from that because they weren't sure about what real estate investors were going to do come 2013 and 14, right? So they got away from it. I had to just blast all those files out to everybody out in the market that I knew was continuing to do it. And I stayed in the middle. I helped those people close those loans, even though I didn't get paid a single cent. So when I look at that logo of that company, it's like, it burns me. But the bottom line is, it is what it is. That's the way the banking world works. I'm here to warn you guys, don't get sucked into what everybody's trying to tell you they can do because they're guys, especially working with the bigger groups of really, really big banks. These guys don't care. The big, big mortgage companies. I've heard a lot of this happening. A lot of people. I've seen a lot of these guys, these names that are out there, these people now trying to do real estate investments. Like, and they're calling me to recruit. I'm like, you some bitches, man. You just cut so many investors' throats over the years. I was present. I saw it. I saw my competitors get just crushed by their own companies. I don't go anywhere else unless I'm starting something new. I ain't, there's no reason for me to play in those roles. So be careful who you talk to out there. That's why why I'm really sharing all this. Now let's get into a, a some some information about the interest rates. Of course, that's why you come here. Now. I want to show you something here when it comes to what I'm seeing out there as far as just the 30 year fixed rate. Now you go to, this is MBS live is where I get a lot of my information from. Look at the average 30 year fixed rate. This is for people buying houses to live in 6.95%. Also it's a write up real quick here on you know, what, what chairman Pell had to say to, to the, uh, to Congress yesterday, and it, it didn't help anything, right? The market actually moved very, very negative. You can read up on that. I'm not going to go over his the things there. Here's bank rate, bankrate.com. Look, 7.03%. No, there's all these folks calling me, telling me about what's happening in the market and that we've got, uh, that they're being offered these really, really low rates. 
when you can't even get a low, that kind of rate for an owner occupied. So be careful what you might be getting offered. Now, we also had, uh, you know, a lot of people worry about what's going on with houses. Have you ever seen the medium home, uh, home price declining? Okay, the median home price, right? So when we look at this, people, houses on the, on the lower end are selling like crazy. It's going up, right? Appreciation's happening significantly. But then you have all the houses on the luxury end. They're not selling like crazy. Median home price, when you look at the middle, that's having the decline because of what's happening with that big dynamic shift between the two sides of housing. Lower price housing, affordable housing, that's continuing to climb, continue to domino, extreme. When you start getting into the luxury, not so much. Median's going to see some, a little bit of shrinkage, not a lot, because this, you know, when you think about per house price, that's not near as big as the per house price up here. So think about it from that perspective. The other thing is you've got, we don't have the inventories we used to have. We, our inventory has shrunk significantly compared to where it used to be. Because of that shrink, because the inventory dropping the way that it has, that is causing a lot of um, a lot of home sales to decline, if you will. So they're they're looking at some home sales, saying we're not seeing as much home sales. But we also see that um, our inventory was roughly half the levels of what we saw in 2019. That's a big deal. Our inventories are half of what we had in 2019 pre-pandemic. So think about that. The pandemic had a massive effect on, on what happened as far as our ability to build homes. And it continues to slow down as far as home building. That's not happening the way it is. So our inventory is not going to be what it could be to meet the demand. Therefore, we're not going to have the type of home sales that people think that we should have. That's going to, I think, have our biggest effect. So you as an investor, don't get too freaked out about what's going on with the houses. There's still massive demand. There's still, there's not enough people, to, uh, there's not enough single families. That's the one thing you got to really focus on. Single families is the place you need to direct, your, direct yourself. Now, we were here looking back on Tuesday. Look at this. We, when I, when I reported back to you, we were you know, reaching kind of one of the higher levels of where our bonds had been for several weeks back since the uh, middle of May, we reached that higher level. And then we started taking a beating. And so, you know, we're starting to follow this, uh, looks like the 35 day moving average down. We're getting squeezed. Yesterday was kind of an ugly day because of what Powell had to say. And then of course, with the other other housing data until it got digested. Now it's got digested. It's like, oh, it's not so dang bad. Look at where we're at today. We're opening in a much better spot. We've come up significantly, but I think we're gonna continue to getting pressured by these moving averages and I hope, I hope that this particular you know, line I've drawn here, this blue uh, support line, I hope that continues to be a support. Right now, we're being it's being used as resistance. It was support yesterday morning when we opened up. We blasted right through it. I hope that as it continues to work, it can work above that support, close above that support. We'll stay in this trading range, guys. We're going to be in this in the sevens. It's just the way it's going to be. There's going to be cost to that. You should, when you're shopping like crazy, looking for somebody to give you the the best interest rate, the longer you take the shop, the more the rates are going to go up, the more you're going to lose out. Find people that you trust, just to have confidence in the trust, have them lock those deals, be confident when your deal is going to close. If it's under rehab, it could take a while. Supply chain might still be an issue. Labor is really an issue in a lot of places. So be sure you've got that lock of somebody you trust to get it done, not somebody who's promising you something they probably can't get. And who knows? There's a lot of promises being made out there in the market by lenders that don't know what they're doing. They're going to say, well, the rates might get better. So I'm going to float into this. I'm going to promise this lower rate and then flip it around on you. I can't begin to tell you how many people have had lower rates promised. They come back to us three weeks later because they couldn't get it. So we made some crap up. I can't say what they did back there, but they're doing stuff to mess with you to try and drag you with rate. Don't be the rate leash. Get yanked in by rate. Just know it, work with somebody who's going to get it done. That's it. Just, just get your deals done and keep moving on to the next one. Time value of money erodes that 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 dollar over the term of your loan anyway. If you don't have my app, go to your app store, get the QJO investment tool right here. It's going to look like this when you get the calculators up. Sorry, uh, I got one of those screen protectors and not going to work. So get it. Reach out to me. Go to AaronChapman.com. Let us know. If you don't, can't find it, we'll help you get it. I'll show you the time value money. You're never paying back what you're borrowing. You get a three-year fix. I'll explain it. Just reach out to me. We'll explain it. Talk to you guys on Tuesday.